It's time to chill out. Oh, it's getting colder. The hot new trend in pain management. I'm going to be the human guinea pig to test this baby out. It's really cold, actually. Plus, the ultimate in healing. I'm getting into this thing to see how it works. And it's a family affair. So good, my friends. My wife, Lisa, reveals secrets from our kitchen. Super fast, super easy. And Daphne's hanging out, too. Coming up next. We'll save lives today. You guys ready to get healthy? Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Today, I am trying it all so you don't have to. Get comfortable. You're going to save your energy for this. You may have to help me later on. The latest techniques and technologies for healing your pain, easing your anxiety, and helping you relax. That's what the show is about today. Let's start off with pain, everyday kinds of pain. Muscle aches, back pains, joint issues. What do you guys normally use to get past those? Yeah. Tylenol or Advil. So medications. Advil also. I heard ice over there. Who's, who are the ice users? Massage. Massage works. Over there? Ice. Ice. Here, yeah, pass that over there. How do you apply the ice? You just put it right on top? I put it in a Ziploc bag and then I put it wherever I have pain. And it doesn't get too cold for you? Sometimes. Sometimes I wrap it with a rag. So what if I told you, if I told you that one of the latest techniques for pain management and it's really popular now is extreme cold. I'm talking about hundreds of degrees below zero. Would you try that? Maybe. Maybe. I got a maybe. <laughs> Here, you won't need the mic for this. Right? You know, is it, today, today, my friends, that's what we're going to do live on the stage. I'm going to test out cryotherapy. It's that cutting edge technique you've been hearing about a little bit that uses extreme cold to ease your pain. It's more powerful than ice when to cover why. Then I'm going to test out the new flotation parlors that promise to put you in a zen-like state of relaxation in less than an hour. Less than an hour. I just went to visit one. And the two most soothing influences in my life, my wife Lisa and my daughter Daphne are here to reveal the Oz family food <laughs> secrets. But first, we all know that cold temperature is effective. I just heard it from a bunch of folks in the audience. The classic thing you do for pain and inflammation is you get an ice bag, right? So here's a big ice bath. And I remember when I was still young and playing sports in college, they put us in these things. And it would shock you, especially when you ran into these little icebergs in there, right? If the temperature of this bath, which is about 50 degrees, 50 degrees is a shock to your body, imagine what happens. If you leave the ice bath age and you move over here, because I have a state-of-the-art device that is designed to take you to 240 degrees below zero. That's the temperature inside this cryotherapy chamber. It's a hot new trend for easing pain, anxiety, and some folks claim much more. So I'm gonna show you how this works, the theory anyway behind it. And then I'm gonna risk it all, risk it all for you guys, because I'm going first. I'm getting into this thing to see how it works. I hope it works. All right, first, the theory. Why is this such an interesting idea? I've got two audience members. How are you? Hi. My hands are cold. I apologize. Hi. So you're going to demonstrate and put your ice gloves on why this works. And the concept is a very important one. The, what happens when you go out in the cold, when it's really chilly and you start to shiver, is your body, when it's exposed to that cold, that's something that's really important for survival mode. It begins to tighten up. Here's your heart, by the way, in the middle. I'll come back to that in a second. Remember, the middle is the heart. It begins to tighten up the blood vessels. And as the blood vessels tighten, go ahead and squeeze those blood vessels up. All the blood pours back into your heart. And then the oxygen joins the blood that now is being pushed from the extremities back into the middle of your body. And as it mixes up there with all that oxygen, it begins to pour out of the heart, because the heart's pumping the blood as best as it can. And that now rejuvenated blood that's full of all those nutrients, including oxygen, begins to flow to other parts of your body where you may have injuries. Look at that. And then healing starts. Let's say you've got back pain. You now have this incredible collection of oxygenated blood, which is bringing nutrients, and this is a big deal, it changes the chemicals that we release during inflammation when we're feeling pain. It's those chemicals that are partly responsible for this. So somehow, between this change in how oxygen flows and where it goes, and these changes in chemicals, people are getting pretty big time results. Would you risk 240 degrees below zero to get that benefit? I hate being cold. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you know, Nate, we're fine. If I survive, you're going next. You, you should have said no. That was your chance. All right. Mark Murdoch, thank you very much. Mark Murdoch is a former college basketball coach and an expert in whole body cryotherapy. He's going to walk us through this. Listen, we already know that ice works for pain in general. It's a broad concept, whether it's your ice in a bag or that ice bath that I showed you earlier. What's the benefit of extreme cold, like two, negative 240 degrees below zero? Yeah, the, the comparison with cryotherapy, whole body cryotherapy to ice, is kind of like a comparison between a full night's sleep to a cat nap. It's mm. just a completely different level, and it actually causes a different reaction, and it's systemic. All right, so fundamental differences. So when you have a cryotherapy device, like this, and again, comparing it to that ice bath that I've got over there, the pain change, I would think, I, at least before I knew much about this, would have been similar, because when you get things cold, they get numb, you don't feel pain. Is right. there a longer term benefit from this? There is. What happens after you exit the chamber is the brain kind of takes over and for the next 36 to 48 hours it begins to target those areas of pain or inflammation that, that's sending that response to the brain. Mm -hmm. Targets those with red blood cells and endorphins for that time. All right. So I love hearing from experts, but I even love hearing from people who've been through it more. So I've got a couple young women joining me. It's Eileen and Beth, both of whom have tried cryotherapy. Who wants to go first? Eileen? Who's, I'll go first. You go first. Okay. So how often do you get cryotherapy? I have been going once a week for two months. And thoughts, does it work? Is it? Yes, it works. I am a runner and I just took up boxing and I love going after because it uh, cuts my recovery time in half. So the benefits are not the ones when you're sitting in there or standing in there. It's actually afterwards as Mark was outlining. Yes. All right. And, Great and how many times? Too. And, and more energy. Yeah. I have a lot more energy after I do it. The endorphin rush. Mm -hmm. Well, that's from chemical changes you were talking about. And Beth, how, how often do you get cryotherapy? I go twice a week. Twice a week? Twice a week. And for how many months have you been going? I've been doing it for about two months. And thoughts on its benefit to you? It's the fountain of youth. <laughs> it's it is? like legitimately the fountain of youth. I went for the first time because I hurt my back running. And by the second treatment, I was back out running. And then I had gone shopping and I was trying on clothes and I went like this in the mirror. And I was like, whose leg is that? That's my leg? I look like it had been airbrushed. There was no cellulite left on the back of my leg. But I, I, I must say, I, I'm curious about technology. I couldn't find any data at all to support what you're saying, although I have heard it from other folks. But you legitimately see your differences like that. I see a huge difference. I also took a minute off my mile and I can curl 15 pounds in each arm. That's Since you did this? Yes. <laughs> right. I don't know about all that. I don't know about that, but I'm curious about whether it works for pain, which is where I think it might have the most benefit. So here's what we're going to do. When we come back, I'm going to be the human guinea pig and test this baby out. Stay here. Coming up next, I'm braving the cold for you. I'm getting in and trying it out. Oh, it's cold! Inside a freezing cryotherapy machine that promises to ease your aches and pains. Will this treatment deliver results? I'm going to find out. Next. 60 second life hacks that'll have you loving life. A little thing could help. In just 60 seconds, her car went from chaos to calm. Before I got organized, I was going crazy. Get organized, get dinner, get fit. Plus, 60 second love advice from Moore Chestnut. Is it sexier to sleep in pajamas or naked? <laughs> All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Well, if LeBron can do it, then I could. I'm weighing in at 180. All right, this is one of the newest trends in easing pain and anxiety is called cryotherapy or cold therapy. And today, I've been asked to try this out for the first time. I don't know why I'm doing this. You guess it's safe, Mark? It's very safe. Now, you're wearing some gloves and some protective yeah, what's this equipment. about? Why do I need so these? So, anything that extends off the body doesn't get as much blood flow, so it's a little more susceptible to frost nip. So, fingers, toes, we cover those. Audience, do you think it's worthwhile for me to get in there for you? It's like the Roman Coliseum. All right, I got two minutes. If I don't come out, you come get me, what happens then? No, I'll guide you through the whole time. You're going to be completely Has safe. Has anyone ever collapsed to the ground and been unresuscitatable? No, 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 not at all. All right, are you ready? All right. There we are. Take that. All right. Step on in. <laughs> Step up. Oh, it's cold. All right. It's really cold, actually. So what's going to happen is you're just going to keep your head above that uh, area, that chamber, that fog the whole time. How do I do that? I Better, hold on. Just keep, your, just keep your chin up. You're not going to talk Ooh. a lot. So you can see the time and temperature on the side. You're uh, right now about negative 200 degrees below zero. It feels like so it. So you're already about 150 colder than an ice bath. Oh keep my that goodness. chin up. 
How we do? LeBron's taller than I am. Of course he gets his head above this thing. What, what if I sink under it? Nah, you'll be great. Just keep, keep, keep staying. <laughs> Stay strong. <laughs> Stay tall. And how, how do, what, I'm a surgeon. What if I get frostbite? Uh, no frostbite. We're just running cold air over the surface of the skin. It's going only about a half a millimeter deep, and it's very temporary. Just enough to hit the cold sensor. Deeper than half a millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking my breath away, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a little shocking the first time. There's no, <laughs> there's no cold on the earth this cold. So your brain has no frame of reference. So the first time's the hardest. <laughs> oh from goodness. then on, it's easy. Okay. You're almost halfway through. You're doing great. Oh, it's getting colder. It is getting colder. We're going to keep you around 240 to 250. Again, about 300 degrees. Colder than that ice bath you were talking about. And, and what happens? Can you catch a cold in here? What if it, uh... No, not at all. Not at all. You're, you're just running cold air over the surfaces of your skin. There's no virus in there. There's no cold getting in your respiratory system, anything like that. I'm trying to move to stay warm, but it doesn't that, help. That's fine. You can turn in there. You can move a little bit. Just nice and slow. Roll out of here. Yeah. Some people like to watch the time. Some people don't like to watch the time. Kind of like 40 watching seconds a, more. Watching a clock. Are you kidding me? If oh. LeBron can do it, you can do it. I don't know about that. <laughs> you when you're a little kid great. waiting for the school bus and it's really cold, that's what it's like. Yeah, the bus never bit, comes. If you were standing at the school bus naked, that's what it would be it's like. like yeah. <laughs> that's me. Other bad memories. How much time? You got about 22 <laughs> seconds left. Seconds, you're God, doing great. Look, the audience loves this. What are you throwing out there? I'm sure. Have some right. empathy. <laughs> Have some pity. I'm doing this for you. <laughs> Has anyone ever quit before two minutes? This is not the. Uh, uh, some people, very rarely. Most people have the experience of ice water, and they think it's going to be much colder, and it's much easier than that. No, no, it's like ice water. I'm not <laughs> talking about. All right, 19 seconds more. All right, no, we're done. So just be careful <laughs> stepping down. Edge of your road. <laughs> Good to go. Oh and that's it. Oh my goodness, that was cold. Yeah, pretty easy. Are my fingers still there? They're there. Yep, five of them at least. I don't know about the other five. Well, I gotta say, it, it, it is remarkably invigorating. I'm not sure it's the adrenaline from having survived. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> What you're going to get now is a massive endorphin rush. So most people will get out after about five minutes and feel like they're actually getting warmer, uh, like a little sweat on the brow, and that is that vasodilation yeah. blood flow back to the I'm tissue. I'm a little lightheaded, actually. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's endorphins. <laughs> yeah. Just, all right. Well, so here's the deal. We know this actually seems to work for reducing pain and inflammation, and I'm proud that it exists for that. We don't know about the cellulite stuff and the anti-aging. I mean, I can't get I don't know if your bottom's going to look any better after you do this thing, except that you're going like this, and they're really fast to keep warm. That's right. Um, so there's no science to back up that stuff. But, but I actually think it's uh, worth a shot, especially if you've got pain. You know, my brother-in-law has been bragging to me about this because he's been doing it as a big athlete. So uh, I, I think it's an interesting concept. For Thanks sure. for bringing it to us. I Thank appreciate you. it. All right, when we come back, I'm going to try out float parlors. They claim to be the ultimate in relaxation. I'm going to test it out next for you. <laughs> next, it's the latest trend in technology, flotation therapy, promising to heal the body from chronic pain while providing total calm and relaxation. But do these float parlors really work? I strip down to give it a try. You feel like you're in space. Next. Oh. <laughs> Today I'm testing out the latest techniques and trends in relaxation. It's called flotation therapy, the next item. It promises to soothe and heal the body, a little faster please, from chronic pain <laughs> while providing lasting calm and total relaxation. But does it really work? Well, I stripped down to give it a try. I'm here today outside the Cloud Aquatic Float Parlor to try one of the latest therapies for stress. It is called Epsom Salt Flotation. It is supposed to really relax you, something that I could really use. See all these bags? So let's go check it out. Hey, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. Before getting in the flotation pod, I first met with Mike Valesio from Cloud Aquatic, who explained how the therapy works. These tanks have over 1,100 pounds of Epsom salt in them. Oh what goodness. that's gonna do is gonna create a super buoyant solution where you float weightless on top of the water and it completely relieve you of all stimulus. Session is about an hour. I can't wait. I can't right. wait. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. I brought along my producer, Dean, to track my progress. And after changing into my swimsuit, I was ready to enter the pod. Well, it's not slippery, that's good. How's the temperature? Actually, the nice temperature is thick. It's very uh, slippery in my hands. I can feel the Epsom salts. Oh, oh my goodness. You float. You really float. I'm not touching the I am not touching the ground. That is really a cool experience. Yeah, what does it feel like? Well, I tell you, the nice part is your feet float. So you, you feel like you're in space. I, mean, I bet this is what my I was actually with, living with no gravity. 
This is exactly what it would feel like. All right, Dr. Oz, I'm gonna leave you in here for 15, 20 minutes, let you relax, and uh, I'll check back in with you then, all right? So I'll be here. All right, good luck. All right, first 20 minutes are over. How do you feel? It's relaxing. Yeah? Visually, you're completely dark, so no stimulants. You can float, so you actually don't feel anything. Do you feel like you're in water or not really? It doesn't feel like water because it's heavy. It's like being in syrup. Like you're in this cloud. It's really relaxing because all your senses are blocked out. Sense of balance is gone because you can't tell what's up and what's down. So. This time, I'm gonna close the pod door so you get a little bit more of the experience. How you feeling? I'm very comfortable. The water insulates your brain, but it also lets you hear your body's own sounds better. So I can hear my heartbeat, my breathing. It actually focuses you on the inside, so your body doesn't get in the way of your mind relaxing. Well, I felt less stress. Now here's the deal, because of the really high salt level, it was like syrup, as I mentioned, these pods simulate a zero gravity environment, which allows you to relax all your muscles. The reason my head was way back like that is you don't want to hold your head up, because it's impossible, because the whole body is sort of sinking to the water. Your necks, your arms, your back, even your ears relax, because you're in this sort of zero stimulus environment. So questions about it. Who's thinking they might do it? Yes. Do you have to know how to swim to be able to go into one of those? No, you actually can't float in that. I'd rather, I mean, can't sing, you will float no matter what. Yeah. It's not that deep anyway, so no, you don't have to know how to swim. Other thoughts? Yeah, bark it out, yell. Did it feel claustrophobic? She's asking, did it feel claustrophobic? I tell you, I'm not claustrophobic, so I'm not the right person to ask. I could imagine getting a little queasy in there, but it's such a calm experience, and all you gotta do is push that cover and it opens up immediately, that you have a lot of control over it. So I don't think people have much of an issue with it. You got a question here? Could you breathe in there? Could I breathe? Uh -huh. It's actually pretty easy. I, I was worried, yeah, because yeah, there wasn't much oxygen, but although it's closed, there's a little crack, so oxygen can get in and out. But you sort of slow down, you're sort of meditating most of the time in there. Question up at the top, yes. How much would one session cost? Like, would it be the same price as a massage or something? It's almost exactly the same price as a massage. I was worried mm -hmm. about that. I, I didn't want to talk about uh, things that people mm -hmm. couldn't afford. So both the flotation and also the cryotherapy, okay. it's sort of the same price too, roughly the price of a massage. Okay. And that's, you know, what you'd get a massage for feeling anxiety or pain and the like, so we thought yeah. it was reasonable. Cool. Yes, lots of questions, go ahead. How long does the average session cost? I mean, how long does it take to get in there? Uh, it takes about 60 minutes, but I'll tell you, I had trouble staying a full 60 minutes. I get antsy anyway sitting, so I, I went, they, every 20 minutes to check on yes, after 40 minutes I had my, enough relaxation. <laughs> and, and, you, know, you cross over into irritation. Yes. Take it away, ma'am. Wasn't the water getting in your ears? You know, it's a good point. You actually have little earbuds you put in. Uh, but the bigger problem is not your ears, it's your eyes. A and open wounds are a problem. Mm -hmm. So if you had a cut on you, I definitely would not get in there because that would burn. That's very intuitive of you, very thoughtful. So here's the thing. It's not for everybody. Uh, if you obviously, I mentioned skin conditions. So you gotta be careful about those. Uh, Epilepsy is a problem. Uh, so is incontinence, by the way. It's not good for the next person. So just be careful, <laughs> ask for claims that it heals pain. Studies show 96% of patients with chronic pain believe that flotation therapy helped. That's what their opinion is. I felt such zen being in there and some peace that I would definitely try it again. So on my osmeter, I would say flotation therapy is effective. When you come back, two of my favorite people are here. You won't want to miss them. Take a look. You know what? I'm going to go back and surprise them. You're going to love this. You don't expect me. I love surprising the women in my life. Here they are. There they are. Later, she's a master at saving time in the kitchen, and until I met her, I didn't know anything about eating healthy. My amazing wife, Lisa, is here. She's here to share some of our Oz family food secrets. <laughs> Tasty and satisfying meal ideas coming up. 60 Second Life Hacks. A little thing could help. 
from cleaning house to reshaping your body. And 60 second love advice from Morris Chestnut. <laughs> All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Yes, has taught me more than any other person on the earth, and she also doesn't mind if I snore and drool on her. It's sort of nice. Plus, she's a master at saving time in the kitchen, and today she's here to share some of our Oz family food secrets. Please welcome my beautiful wife of exactly 30 years this year. I didn't forget the anniversary. And author of the new book, it's fantastic. She wrote it all, The Oz Family Kitchen. Lisa Oz. So please, just in case rumors get started, I don't drool, do I? No. Yeah. What do I do? You steal all the covers, for one. I do do that. I'm greedy yes, about covers. Yes, And go ahead. You tell them this, you love the story of the puffing air. She claims, she claims I go like this. She does. <laughs> Which she says is worse than snoring, but I don't think it exists. However, you claim it so and I'll believe it. All right. So Lisa knows a ton about eating healthy. I don't. When we first started dating it, I heard she was a vegetarian. And I have to admit this. I had no idea what a vegetarian was. I thought vegetarians ate vegetables and other things. So I made you this specialty of mine, it was chicken wrapped in aluminum foil. And that was it, nothing else. <laughs> and it was your specialty. And that was the first and last meal I think you've ever cooked. <laughs> yes, it was. But it was my best effort. And we were in Philadelphia, I was in medical school, so because she didn't want to eat the chicken because she didn't eat chicken, I learned. I took her to a steakhouse. Yeah, it was really sweet. So let's, let's go out for dinner. If you don't eat chicken, we'll, we'll go to a restaurant. Uh, the restaurant was Pat's Cheese Steak. So. <laughs> if you're from Philly, you know they got great cheese steaks and there. I don't know that he didn't know what a vegetarian was. I just think he wasn't listening when I said vegetarian. It's that male uh, condition where the ears don't work when you talk. <laughs> Why I'm listening today, she's gonna to educate all of us about food. I must say, I've been blessed to have wonderful food for 30 years, uh, but a lot of folks don't realize how we eat. So you decided to put it together in one little tome. And what prompted you to spend so many hours of your life doing that? Well, it was the number of people who would come up to me when I would say I was your wife, and they would say, oh, do you just eat kale and soaked nuts at home? Yeah, literally, kale, blueberries, yogurt, and soaked nuts, that's <laughs> our diet. So no, I wrote this because I figured people needed to see that the way we eat at home, which is healthful and good for your body, is also abundant and delicious and fun and joyful. It's not, you know, purgatory for eating. All right, so she's picked out three items. Come on over here. Secret number one is something that I absolutely love. It's a casserole. Yes. And most people probably don't think I have a touch of casserole, but this is a little different. Well, that's because most casseroles are all cream and noodles and not things that you would normally eat. But this is a fabulous casserole dish. It is beans. It has a Mexican flavor. So you start by you saute. It's super easy and it's actually really cheap to make. Um, it's beans and pe uh, peppers and onions and garlic and mushrooms. You saute it all together. It does not take long at all. So you pretend that you're sauteing that. Delicious, right? Usually I just sit and by and watch her anyway. I don't yeah. really help this that is, much. This is true. This is like, feels like home. This is what we do. And then we make a, a quick crust, a cornbread crust. Because you know how good cornbread is with Mexican food? And it's, it's cornbread and a... You said it was like home. You're just, <laughs> um, yeah, not this, that this part. Is, <laughs> um, and then we've got... A, 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 four a little, <laughs> Yeah, food, four ply. Um, baking soda and some chili powder. This gives it that delicious Mexican flavor. A little salt. And now this is my secret ingredient for Mexican food. I love it. I bet a lot of you out there hate this. Um, Mehmet loves it. Daphne hates it. Cilantro. Um, my favorite herb. How many cilantro lovers are there out there? I don't, yeah. I don't want all the haters. There's actually a gene that makes some people taste cilantro like it's soap. So people don't like it. That's what's wrong with you. My daughter Daphne, as Lisa mentioned, has it. Okay. So wait, it's not done. You I know, I'm getting ready. You can put powder on a casserole. So this is actually a vegan recipe. So instead of using eggs, we use um, flax seeds ground up with a little coconut milk. And um, you moisten the flax seeds in water, put in the coconut milk. And the secret ingredient is a little bit of maple syrup. So it has a nice sweetness to it. And then, ah, you See what a good that. whisker I am? Yes. After years of training. Whisking that, is whisking, your, whisking, that is your job. Sweetie, you found, if this TV thing doesn't work out, you know what you can I, do. My calling in life, you, you surgery and whisking. We do this in the OR a lot. Can you like sort of like get more of it in there? Anyway, once, once you've got this all whisked, actually you were doing better than I am. <laughs> um, then we're just gonna take dollops of this and put it on top here. It's gonna be whisked better when you do it at home. Um, and then you just make individual serving size dollops like that, pop it in the oven, and this is how it comes out. It, it is so good, my friends. Home. It it's good? like a fiesta. Mm. And it's the kind of thing, you, you'll be full on this, you won't be in too many galleries. All right. Lots of, lots of fiber. Number two family secret. 
has to do with the food you guys all know that I love, which yeah, is nuts. not much of a secret that you're Mr. Nuts, is there? No. <laughs> but, that's right. I always tell you, you soak your nuts, you soak freeze your nuts. your nuts, all those kind of things. Yeah. But this is different kind of pre preparation for nuts because it gets get boring eating raw nuts all the time. So how do you spice them up? Right, so this is a glazed spicy nut. I like to make it spicy. You don't like it too hot. So it's a not so spicy nut. But what we do is we make a glaze here. It's got um, a little olive oil, again, maple syrup, and any spices you like. I happen, my favorite, um, spice is nigella seeds. Yeah. Um, so I happen to use a lot of nigella seed, cumin, oregano, salt, pepper, and then what makes it, uh, some garlic, what makes it spicy is the cayenne pepper. So you can put in as much cayenne pepper as you like. She I burns my mouth out. The whole tongue feels like it's falling out when she puts that stuff in there. But, but you can't explain, I do, yeah. you know, what I do love is nigella seeds, which give so it a, a very different, like almost exotic flavor, but most people don't use these. So educate folks. Well, you can get them, if you can't find them in your local market, you can get them online, anywhere. And they have a wonderful Middle Eastern flavor. If any of you have ever had Armenian string cheese, you ever had the, this cheese with the little black dots? It's that taste. It's, it's a little bit licorice-y, but not quite. Um, so then you dump them in. This is the part I do. Yes, okay. I'm good with my hands. Yes, you are. Yes. And you do that. Yes. And then? And then you just spread them out. The spreading part I'm really good at. Here we are. Yep, here, now, here. Oh, you gotta clean off your hands. Mm. You I go. like that. My, this, is, this, is, this is how you say married for 30 years. Pop these in the oven. <laughs> yeah, lots of nuts. Um, pop these in the oven. Um, watch how long you keep them in there, because people's ovens have different temperatures, so keep an eye on them. They, you just want them to be lightly toasted. They come out and they are so tasty. Now, you don't have to trust me. I'm gonna take this to the guys, the other family I have with the folks who work here at the show. So, Tony, taste that. Uli, Uli's our food Thank stylist. You. Paul, take some of that. Thank you. Share it. Oh, oh, they're feeding each other. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is it worth it? Very good. Even if it takes 20 minutes. That's it. 15, 20 minutes later, you got heaven. All right. Finally, the last food secret is, Lisa. That Mehmet likes a shot of tequila every now and then. I do like it. I love tequila. Lisa does not like straight up tequila, so she actually makes a gingered Paloma. Well, I'm just too old for, uh, for shots these days. So I, I figure a cocktail is a little more sophisticated, a little more grown up, but it still has tequila. It's grapefruit juice, a little lime, some ginger juice, a splash of uh, club soda, and then we've got this grown up cocktail. I got this Cheers. for you also. Oh, I'm going to do this both? This is mine, yes. I'm going to do shots and cocktails? Yes. A right. two fisted drinker? Here? I toast to you, honey. Okay, yeah, thanks. <laughs> mm. You gotta chug that. <laughs> she's too smart for me. It's when the first real start, tequila. <laughs> yeah, we, I did fake tequila and the real tequila. She's too smart for me. After 30 years, she's figured me out. <laughs> I love you dearly. All right, up next, Lisa's is gonna show you how to make a salad bar. This is actually what we eat at our house most evenings because it's easy to do and it's so good for you. We'll be right back. Another foodie in the family joins us. My daughter Daphne, how she's raising her daughter to be a great eater. Who's gonna eat delicious broccoli? Plus, she reveals how she's handling her current pregnancy and tackling those cravings. Coming up. My beautiful wife, Lisa, who has a great new book. It's called The Oz Family Kitchen. It's filled with quick and easy ideas for feeding your family. It's what we do in our family with a big, busy family. And Lisa grew up in one, and she made one with us, with me. Uh, Lisa has her favorite go-to meals, and there isn't much time to make dinner, so these are the ones we go to all the time. One of my favorites, The Oz Family Salad Bar. So why do you like salad bars when you're big and busy? Well, the great thing about this is it's customizable. You know, in our family, there are 15 different diets at any one time. So we have been, I've been vegan, I am a vegetarian. We have a daughter who's gluten-free. We have a, my son, our son, who has to have meat pretty much at every meal, plays football. So the nice thing about this is everybody can eat the same thing without me being a short order cook and doing 15 different entrees, but we can customize it to whatever it is we like. So we start with a big bowl of salad of greens. You can use any greens that you have. The thing about this recipe is that really it's about your pantry, your refrigerator. And then you pick a protein. So if I like these beautiful little uh, roasted chickpeas, that's a protein, or you can use chicken if you're a meat eater. But you like chicken. Um, then you pick a nut, a seed, Mehmet here, you, you can do sunflower seeds, those are almonds, you could do pecans, walnuts, whatever, any kind of nut you like. Um, and again, you spread this out on the table and everybody makes their own meal. 
Uh, we, you do a cheese if you want. This is feta, but you could do Parmesan, you could do Munster, whatever you've got lying around, and then a fruit. And if you don't have any fresh fruit, you can always use dried fruits. You can use cranberries, you can use um, dried cherries, you can use apricots, what, again, whatever you have lying around. This is the salad that you put together on your own plate. He, he did it in the whole bowl. Okay. You would actually eat that whole thing. I That's would eat a this. meal in a bowl well, right in there. Fairness, well, you know, we don't actually make it on a plate. We'll make a whole bowl, and then people will pick at this for the rest of the evening. And then they could add whatever they want separately onto yeah. their plate. But the but. magic isn't this. The magic is the dressing. Well, yes. So, so it's so easy to make that there's really no reason to, you would ever have to buy bottle dressing. This is super fast, super easy. Um, you would dress the salad. It's basically just olive oil. Uh, apple cider vinegar, a little bit of maple syrup again to cut the tartness, um, some garlic, some mustard, salt, pepper, and my favorite ingredient, which is fresh cut chives. And I'm just gonna put a little extra chives on there. They make everything taste good. Mm. The dressing is the best part. The dressing is so good. Frankly, I don't care if the salad's wilted, it still tastes good. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. taking care of me for 30 years, <laughs> making me healthy as I am. All right, up next. Another foodie in the family, daughter Daphne, joins us to talk motherhood, pregnancy, she's eight months pregnant, and plans for our newest grandbaby. And later on, Lisa is going to reveal, unveil, for the first time, my all-time favorite <laughs> cheat food. Stay here. <laughs> later, Lisa and Daphne reveal my all-time favorite cheat food. 60-second life hacks. A little thing could help. From cleaning house to reshaping your body. And 60-second love advice from Morris Chestnut. <laughs> All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. My wife Lisa and I have tried to set a good example for our kids about the importance of family and hard work. And our eldest daughter, Daphne, is making us proud on both accounts. She's a great mom to our 18-month-old granddaughter, Philo. There she is, little Philo. And she's also one of the co-hosts of The Chew on ABC. I welcome my daughter, Daphne. Thank you. So, you can see from just a, a cursory examination that Daphne's ready. She's pregnant, gonna give birth in about a month to our second grandchild, little boy. Yes. I can't ask the name, I guess. Well, we don't know the name, you can ask. I just can't tell you. She won't tell me the name, all right. <laughs> We're beyond excited. So, I would love to hear you describe to everybody else how this is different from the first pregnancy. Well, I mean, I, I, we have a little girl at home, Philo, obviously, and uh, this one's a boy. And I feel like, I don't know if the women in here who've had boys and girls, I feel like I've carried so differently with this one. Um, you know, with Philo, I was really wide right off the <laughs> outset. I'm, and everything was very compact. Your muscles are still tight. Everything's held in there. Whereas with him, it's just been popped out right from the outset. And it's interesting. I'll tell you this. It was kind of devastating. I fit much better in my clothing, but I'm about five pounds heavier now than I was at this time with Philo. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always the boy's fault. It's always it's his good fault. Training. Yeah. Well, it's, but I also know why that's the case. And it's because I've been craving Mexican food all day long. So chips and salsa for breakfast, chips and salsa for lunch. Well, people do that even without being pregnant. <laughs> uh, what did you crave, Lisa, when you were pregnant? Oh, gosh. I was worried you would ask me this question. Um, brownie batter? Brownie batter. <laughs> Uncooked with no brownie eggs batter. With no, no eggs. eggs no <laughs> eggs. Just, you know, the box of brownie batter. You put some water. I mean, <laughs> so very bad. You know, all grandparents brag about their grandkids as part of the, the opportunity we have. But, uh, and, you know, Bill is a little special because not only is she all the other things all grandkids are, but she loves eating food, especially exotic food. She's one of the best young eaters. Let's go over here. I've got a, a bunch of things that I've seen her eat. And some of these things are not items that I would have expected normally. For example, we've got olives here. She will munch through these darn olives. She'd finish this much off in she one sitting. And you better pit them quickly, she'll swallow the pits. And they come out in her poop, it's not pretty. That, it has never happened. That, that's because I'm so diligent about. getting out the pits. <laughs> What else do you have here that she eats? <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. I, I try to feed her a variety of things, and I let her try a bunch of different things. And these are some of the ones that she actually really has gravitated towards. She loves grilled salmon. It's one of those things I never anticipated her liking. She loves grilled it's from salmon. from her grandfather. Probably. Uh, brown rice and lentils, again, something that you wouldn't expect a kid to really love, but it's one of the things I exposed her to early, and so she, and she seems to have liked it. Hummus. Chicken and then some uh, some broccoli, but what you'll see here is it's like it's a very flavorful food And I think at first when I was you know first learning how to feed her I was afraid of salt and I was afraid of lots of flavor and spice and any of those things and I think kids palates are a lot like adults palates at least from what I've seen You know she wants things that have a lot of flavor in it. She does not want bland food So you've got a little video that I want to start off with but I have an ulterior motive I want to talk about how kids acquire tastes 
we're living it in real time, but there's actually pretty much, uh, much science around this. So can I show a little video you sent me? Of the broccoli? Yes. Philo loves broccoli. Yeah, yeah of This course. is how we get Philo <laughs> to eat broccoli. Take a look. Who's going to eat delicious broccoli for her lunchtime, for her lunchtime? Who's going to eat delicious broccoli? It's a green monster. It's a green monster. So after that song, which Philo loves, she actually stopped eating broccoli. I understand. We scared her away. But I want to talk a little bit about why kids acquire the taste of their mom. And most folks don't know this. You probably don't either. I made a little animation oh, for yeah. you. This is very high tech, very sciencey. So let's say you're the average woman and you start having cravings when you're pregnant. She looks you, way too good. Yeah, she looks good. <laughs> so you, soda and chips. Now here's the thing. The baby is immersed in the amniotic fluid and actually oh. drinks several ounces of that fluid every day. So when the baby's exposed to chips but not broccoli, doesn't like the broccoli when they're born. But let's turn it around, let's go back in time. Now you're pregnant, maybe for the second child, and now you're eating the greens and the green drink and all the healthy, delicious foods that are good for you and the baby. The baby gets those things in their mouth from that amniotic fluid that they're drinking all day long. So when you expose them to these same healthy foods after they're born, guess what? They eat them. Now this is actually pretty cool information and absolutely validated over and over again. So that's one of the big challenges. Yeah. So come have a seat. Here's one of the big questions. If it's too late because you already had the baby and they're 25 years old, they're not eating good <laughs> food, or... And all they'll eat is chips and salsa. Right. <laughs> yeah. or, 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 brownie batter, have you been craving that? <laughs> yeah. or, or if for whatever reason the child doesn't cooperate, how do you convince a child to eat the right foods? Well, you know, I, I really look at it like, you know, with every parent's nightmare, you make, you go through the process of making a delicious meal for your family and your kids won't eat it. And it's just, you know, you can fight them and you can try to bribe them and cajole them into eating what you want them to eat. And my grandma, my mother's mother, grandma, who won't come on the show, we know. Please, if she sees this, she will not, I tried to, I called to try to get her, I tried to con her, and I just said, come hair and makeup ready just in case. And she was scared away, won't come. Yeah. Well, she, one of the things that she said to me with Philo, because it's you are you get you do get nervous you I mean you're it's your responsibility to make sure that they're getting the best nutrition that they're eating the things that are gonna make them grow and thrive um, and so there, there would be nights where she would just decide she wouldn't eat broccoli anymore she wouldn't eat the things that she used to love and I would get nervous and scared and try and that she wasn't gonna get enough food and she wasn't gonna have enough of the nutrients she needed and so you I would fight with her on it and Grammy would say you know, don't make it an emotional battle. The last thing you want is your kids to see withholding food or withholding eating as a way to control you, as a way to get your attention, as a way to have that emotional strife, because food should be about pleasure and joy and abundance and not about a, a conflict of wills, basically. So, and she said, look, she'll eat when she's hungry, so don't worry about it. And, and, and my pediatrician actually said, over the course of a week is what you really want to pay attention to. You know, some days they're just not that hungry. We go through, as adults, you go through this. Some days you're just not that um, into certain foods. And then the next day you might be fully ready for it. That said, mm -hmm. I do have a couple recipes that I've developed that I try to, you know, it's, it's not sneaking food in. It's just yes, adding it is. She's sneaking food in. It's adding it's additional covert. ingredients um, <laughs> right. that I think make them a little more nutritious. And that I also just give me a little peace of mind as a parent. So um, one of the first things that I developed was this little smoothie that's just avocado, banana, some yogurt. And then um, I'll throw in a big handful of spinach. And kids don't know at, at Philo's age, she's only 18 months, that green is supposed to be gross. She's actually kind of into it. And it's a little sweet from the banana and creamy from the avocado. Yeah. And so having her eat that right off the bat in the morning gives me insurance policy over the rest of the day if all she'll eat for me at dinner time is pasta with red sauce. Um, I make meatballs and I'll put the broccoli, actually, because she did love broccoli and now she'll eat it with the meatballs. I'll put broccoli and cheddar cheese right in the meatball so that she's getting everything all at once. And you know, you, you, you experiment with your kids, but I think the single most important thing I did and, and I learned it from you guys was we grew up eating at the dinner table together as a family. And I saw what you guys ate and I saw how much joy you took in your food and how much pleasure we got out of cooking together. And I I was looking at me too. I cooked the food too. No, no, no. How much pleasure we got out of cooking together. <laughs> How much pleasure you got out of eating the food we cooked together. Um, and, and I think kids want to emulate their parents. They will, and they love their pa parents and they respect you so much. Seeing you eat well and seeing you eat foods that are good for you and enjoy that process is the most important thing. All right. So the big question I'm wondering, because I like conflicts, are how Philo is going to deal with her little baby brother. Let's go back a step. Why do you like conflict so much? Because you can really get... <laughs> deeper into someone's soul. If you just but, puncture through the external little crusty shell we all keep around ourselves. So I watch Philo play with her cousins and I'm wondering how well she's gonna take to having someone else in her life that she didn't invite, like her brother. 
<laughs> well, I will say this. She Again, she's young, so I don't know if she fully comprehends what's about to happen in her life. Sometimes she'll come and she'll kiss my belly. Sometimes she'll come and she'll headbutt my stomach. So, you know, there's, a, there's a, definitely a conflict going on internally. I think she... Um, I think she will have some difficulty, as I did when my second sister, who I love dearly now, came along, <laughs> that, that you're replaced and your perfect existence is the only child has been, you know, uprooted. Um, but she loves being with people. She loves hanging out with our family and, and just being around people and being part of the mix. And I have no doubt that at the end of the day, she'll have be best friends with this. They thing. will eventually. They always are. Right, up next, Lisa and Daphne unveil my all-time favorite cheap food. What do you think it is? Well, you're about to find out. And it's easy to make. Cash versus credit. Which one makes it pack on more pounds at the lunch counter? To test this, we came up with a very revealing social experiment. Plus, see how this mom wiped out 40 grand in debt just by what she put in her fridge. All new Oz. That's coming up on Thursday. Here's what you're going to be talking about tomorrow. Yes. I do have a favorite cheat food from time to time, and you're about to find out my all-time favorite one. Lisa Daphne, you ready for the reveal? Oh, yeah. They tag team these all the time. My favorite cheat food is... Almost German chocolate cake. Yes. So, if you don't mind, as you're cutting it for everybody, we're yes. going to share it with you guys. We love you so much. Why do you call it almost? Well, because a true German chocolate cake is a light chocolate, and your favorite, as everybody knows, is dark chocolate. So this is a dark chocolate cake with a walnut and coconut icing. So it's like a German chocolate mm. cake, only it's even more dense and rich and delicious. Doesn't that look really good? <laughs> huh? And yes, it's not exactly healthy. It is a cheat food, but once a year for your birthday, it's the only thing you ever ask for. It is truly. Every year I get this. I'm a very consistent person on this. You know what? I want you all to be able to enjoy this. So we actually made a couple of these cakes, thanks to Lisa and Daphne, and they're all over the studio. Please bring them out and share them with our audience. <laughs> I want you all to enjoy it. So, honey, while there, uh, 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 wait till you taste it first. They're so polite. Honey, I don't tell you this enough, but I'm very proud of you for all the things you do. You put a lot of your heart into making this book. And I know that, but just to be clear, this is the person who spent hours of her life saying, you know what, I'm going to put down on paper what I make for the family. It started off as a scrapbook just so the kids would have it, but I'm proud of you for putting this together. And even more than the cake you're about to enjoy, I want you all to go home with a copy of Lisa's new book, The Oz Family Kitchen. It is yours. I love you. Thank you, Daphne. Daphne. Don't forget to see Daphne weekdays on The Chew on ABC. Remember, happy and healthy starts at home where your family is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.